Hello guys, and welcome to another Honkai Star Rail video. Alright, so it's another week, that means another Memory of Chaos gameplay video. Honestly, it's getting to the point where I'm just too lazy to even do the runs. So I decided to change things up this week, and I tried to auto through all the stages in the Memory of Chaos. And to my surprise, I was actually successful in 3-starring all of the stages. The only stage that gave me a bit of trouble was actually stage 9. I think it took me three attempts to actually three-star this eventually, because one run my Pella kept dying, and then the other one uh, my entire team just got wiped by the uh, Deer's Flamboyant Gore, which is uh, his ultimate technique when you don't end up either killing the, the plants that spawn, that triggered that ultimate. This one took about three attempts, but eventually I finished on full auto as well. As for stage 10, the teams I ran are the same ones that I usually run. I have Zile, Silver Wolf, Asta, and Fu Xuan for my semi mono quantum team on the first half. And then against the uh, Swarm Disaster Bug, we have Pela, Ting Young, Bailu, and Enviber Lune. Yeah, hopefully Hoyoverse decides to add more stages to the Memory of Chaos in future patches. Or I don't know, just up the difficulty. Because at this point, if I can auto through stage 10 as a free to play, yeah, the content's starting to get pretty dry in Honkai Star Rail. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoy the gameplay and commentary. Okay, so we start off the first half with Fushan's technique, and then we start the fight off with Asta's technique for full stacks. And then from here, we basically just turn on auto and let it run. I'm curious to see uh, what the auto AI decides on what to do. It seems like they like to focus down the uh, Mara struck adds on the side instead of the main uh, gorilla. Asta skill. Decides to immediately use the Asta ultimate. Speed boost. Yeah, the AI's... It decides to target the... the Marstruck mobs, but then it defense breaks the Gorilla, which is actually correct, but... Honestly, if I were playing manually, I would just, uh... Focus down the Gorilla first before focusing on the, uh... The Marstruck adds. Right, there's Zelay's ultimate into the Gorilla. Oh, 160k damage. Damn, that is a lot. Okay. Don't get the Resurgence proc, but we do kill off the Gorilla from the Quantum, uh, what do you call it? Weakness break. Now we get the Resurgence, and then... Oh, the uh, AI is smart enough to actually just use a basic attack there to save skill points. Not bad. And then the AI also immediately uses the Zelay ultimate. That one didn't crit, so it only hit for 38k damage, unfortunately. We implant the weakness onto the Maiden. Fu Xuan unfortunately gets imprisoned there. There's Asta's ultimate. To Silver Wolf ultimate on the Maiden. Fu Xuan's finally out of the imprisonment. Reset the Matrix. Gonna do our little clock thing now, so the AI is smart enough to. I don't know why it's using Zelay's basic attack though when we have so many skill points, but at least it's smart enough to target the uh, Maiden when she enters that mode. The more hits you get off on her, the less damage she does. That's uh, a skill. Now they finally decide to use Zelay's skill. I don't know why we had like three or four skill points available, but they still decided to ju just use a. Uh, Zelay's basic attack for some reason. Right, here's Zelay's ult. 80k with no uh, defense break or quantum weakness implanted. That's pretty decent. There's the Silver Wolf ultimate. Into the Asta ultimate. I mean, the AI is doing pretty. The auto AI is doing okay. There's like a couple of plays, obviously, that I would have changed, but for the most part, my team's still alive, and we're about to finish the run in, I believe, either 20, or at least not the run, the first half in either 25 or 24 cycles remaining, which is not bad. Alright, and then we should finish off the gorilla here. Alright, second half, we start off with Ting Young Technique times two. A Bailu technique, and then we'll initiate the fight with Payless technique for the defense break. 
And same thing, we start auto. And this half, obviously, is going to have me sweating more because we're fighting the Swarm Disaster boss. There is uh, definitely more RNG involved. And we don't actually have... The one issue with Bailu, unfortunately, even though I love using Bailu as my healer, she doesn't have any cleanses. So if you have bad RNG and Bailu either gets CC'd or Imbiber Lunane gets uh, crowd controlled in this fight, uh, the run's pretty much bricked. I'm really surprised here that the AI is actually smart enough to properly weakness break both of these centaurs. I actually failed a lot of my previous runs in uh, previous Mem Memory of Chaos uh, seasons because I wasn't paying attention to uh, weakness breaking both of these centaurs when they're charging their attacks. It's actually one way to prevent your team from just getting one shot in this first half. But yeah, really surprised the AI was able to uh, properly do that. I mean, it did waste a lot of skill points earlier, I noticed, with Palo's uh, skill, which was unnecessary, but the fact that it's able to, like, properly uh, gauge how much toughness bar needs to be broken with Palo, uh, it's pretty nice. Uh, speaking of Palo, here's our ultimate. Yeah, like this part, the uh, AI is not managing the skill points as efficiently as a normal per person would, so... Imbiber Lunane is forced to just basic attack and skip his turn. Which is really bad for my Imbiber Lunane particularly, because mine is built really slow on a, a lot of attacks. So, you want to be able to, like, use his enhanced level 3 basic attack every time he gets his turn. If he has to skip his turn with just a regular basic attack, his damage output goes down by quite a bit. Alright, Ting Young ultimate into Lunane. Lunane's almost dead here. He'll... He might die to another tick of the wind shear, unfortunately. But I think Bailu's ult is going to come up shortly, so the AI will probably use that. There's a Palos ultimate. See, that's a sort of a waste of a skill point. Actually, no, not really. Actually, that was pretty smart. What am I saying? That froze the, uh, the swarm bug, so he didn't get a turn. If he got a turn there, I think he would have just probably one-tapped my Imbiber Lunane. So that was actually a smart play by the AI, surprisingly enough. And there's Bailu's ultimate to top everyone off, so now we're safe. Right. Only a level 2 enhanced basic attack. Let's lack the skill points. Chained into the ultimate immediately. So now we're in the second hit phase. And this is when he spawns that one uh, swarm bug that can outrage uh, the majority of your team. So this is usually where most of my runs brick, because... I failed to properly kill it or weakness break that uh, swarm bug, but I believe the AI here does a pretty good job of it. Right. Uses the Bailu skill to heal. There's the AoE. And he times the Ting Young perfectly into Lunane. Alright, now Lunane has his ultimate. I believe the AI uses it immediately. Probably in the middle half. I don't think he targets the. The one in the... Yeah, he doesn't target the Outrage Bug. But we can hit the Outrage Bug here. And all the damage from the explosions end up just killing all the bugs to the side. So it turns out to be okay. All right. And now the bug is going to hit us really hard. And unfortunately it kills off Lunane, but we have Bailu. So she just revives. So the run is still safe. Of course, Bailu heals now. And then uses the ultimate again to top everyone off. So at this point, we're pretty much good to go. Everyone's topped off. Uh, Pela's gonna weakness break and apply a defense shred on the swarm boss. Taking on autos and Lunane will finish him off. And that is how we managed to auto through floor 10 with only uh, 21 cycles. Yeah, 21 cycles remaining. All right, now let me go over my characters and their gear real quick. I did do some upgrading on some of my characters. I'll let you guys know. This is my Ting Young with her stats. Light Cone is, but the battle isn't over. Traces. Relics. And of course, unfortunately, she's at idle on zero. Next is Asta. I got her to six star and level 70 finally. These are her stats. Lycone is Dance 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 at Super Imposition level 2. 
Traces are relatively underinvested, but it's fine. She still works perfectly fine. These are our relics. Got her on the four piece uh, speed set. Don't mind her body piece, that's just temporary. I know she needs either HP or defense percent just for the bulk. She doesn't really do that much damage. And I also need a energy regeneration link rope when I get the chance. Eidolons, of course, she's at Eidolon 6. Alright, next is Bailu, who always seems to bail me out of sticky situations. These are her stats. Light Cone is perfect timing at Super Imposition 2. These are her traces. Relics. Eidolons, of course, she's at Eidolon 0. Next is Fu Shuen. I finally got her to level 80 because I was just simply tired of looking at her uh, low HP. Her HP is still low because I didn't level a lot of her relics, but just having a Fu Shuen at under 6,000 HP is uh, kind of kind of, kind of a meme. So these are her stats. Her Lycone is Moment of Victory. Traces, I need to work on them eventually, but for now, this will do... I guess extra levels in her ultimate will just make her deal a little bit more damage, but in terms of sustain and survivability, this is good enough for now. Uh, her relics definitely need work. Uh, some of them are not fully leveled, just because I'm being greedy and trying to fish for better relics, but honestly, this piece right here is pretty solid. The only issue is I got unlucky with the rolls and it all rolled into flat defense, so eh. It happens. Eventually, I'll probably just give up and end up maxing this to plus 15. And then this needs to be replaced with a energy regeneration rope when I get the chance. Eidolons, she's at Eidolon 0. Alright, Gotcha Gamer Girl Silverwolf is next. I got her to level 80 as well, finally. These are her stats. They're pretty nice, honestly. I finally got her to a good amount of effect hit rate. So now all her uh, implants, weakness implants, will always land and her crit rates at a pretty solid level for a sub DPS. Lycone, of course, is before the tutorial mission starts at Superimposition level 5. Traces are nearly maxed out. Uh, I'll eventually do this, but it's really expensive. I don't know about the basic attack. I can max it out too, but once again, a lot of resources just for a sub DPS. These are her relics. I have her on the four piece musketeer set. Hon honestly, her relics are pretty much complete at this point. Uh, some of them could have, I guess, speed, a little bit more speed in the substats, or just have speed in general. I would like her to be a little bit faster. Right now, she's just below 150 uh, speed, so... But it's okay. Other than that, all her other stats are pretty well rounded out. Eidolons? She does not have any Eidolons. Alright, next is Zile, who is one of my hyper carries for the first half of my team. These are her stats. Trying to round out her crit rate to 70%. We're almost there. Her light cone is cruising in the Stellar Sea, super in position level 5. Traces are pretty much maxed out. I'm going to forego the last point in her basic attack, as you only use her basic attack just to finish off really, really weak opponents, just to save a skill point sometimes. Uh, these are her relics. Pretty much done. Might try to dig for a better glove with a little bit more crit rate and maybe less crit damage just for more consistency, but... Honestly, this is already a pretty cracked glove. Oh, and I eventually want to switch over to the Rutilant set instead of the uh, Inner Sal Salsado set, because I believe uh, most of her damage is going to be coming from her skill uh, instead of her ultimate. As for Eidolons, she's at Eidolon 0. Alright, next is the dragon, the legend, Dan Hung in Biber Lunane. These are his stats. He's almost at 70% crit rate, but I don't have him on Rutilant yet, so once I get him to Rutilant, he should easily hit that 70% crit rate threshold. He does need a little bit more crit damage too, however, but he's, I mean, he does a lot of damage even without that. Light Cone is of course on the Fall of an Eon at Super Imposition level 5. Traces are completely maxed out, he needs to be, as he is a hyper carry, and he uses all of his skills and abilities to deal damage. Relics, I recently finally got him on a two-piece imaginary and a two-piece musketeer set. 
So his damage output should be gr much greater than what it used to be. Now this piece here rolled really well. Like, Jesus Christ, it went crit rate twice, crit damage twice, and attack percent twice. Uh, if this flat defense was speed, this would literally be the perfect piece, but I'm not going to complain. Uh, the gloves, I've had these gloves for a while, and they're pretty good. Only break effect is the only dead stat here. Chest piece, uh, it's really good. Uh, crit rate, crit, crit rate, and attack, but the effect hit rate and break effect are dead stats. Luckily, it missed effect hit rate and only hit break effect once, and the crit rate is good enough that I'm willing to accept this piece for now. Boots. These boots were actually... I, I was really hesitant to roll these boots because the substats are kind of all over the place, and he does, doesn't really need the break effect. But I got really lucky, and four of the rolls, I believe, all went in a crit... Either four or three of the rolls went in a crit rate. So this piece is definitely carrying me when it comes to giving uh, Enviro Lunane enough crit rate. Uh, eventually, if I find a better pair of boots with uh, crit rate, crit damage as the two substats, I'll probably end up replacing this uh, in the future. Uh, I need to work on his, what do you call it, his Planar Sphere and getting that Rutilin set. I still don't have it. Same with the Link Rope. So currently he's just running a Space Ceiling Station set. And he can't even get the second attack percent boost because he's like base speed. I think I literally have my Imbiber Lunane at base speed. So he is... He is a very slow uh, character, but he makes up for it in just terms of raw damage. Also, this piece rolled a lot of crit damage. Holy crap. I never noticed that. That was a lot of crit damage right there. As for his Eidolons, you guys should already know if you guys have been keeping up with my Honkai Star Rail videos. He's at Eidolon 2. And finally, last but not least, we have Payla. These are her stats. For her light cone, I'm currently just using post-op conversation as a placeholder for the base stats. I don't. I tried to upgrade the uh, sweat light cone, the whatever that's called, the sweaty light cone that gives the fence shred. I don't have enough trace material, and I don't like farming trace material when there's not a double buff event going on. So we're gonna have to wait until the event comes back before I decide to fully build that uh, light cone. Trace is fairly low investment, but it's good enough for now. Uh, her relics. I do need to change this up. I don't really think... No, no, not that I don't really think. I know that the two-piece musketeer is not worth it on her. I'd rather run like a two-piece HP or anything that keeps her alive because she doesn't really do any damage. If you want to run a musketeer set, you have to run the four-piece, but I'm running her on a two-piece musketeer and a two-piece uh, speed set, so it doesn't make any difference, honestly. As for Eidolons, she's at Eidolon 4. Okay guys, well that's going to be it for this Honkai Star Rail video. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next Honkai Star Rail video. Peace!